We've moved now to the OR, and our patient is um, marked. We did that before we came to the OR. Her skin was prepped with DuraPrep. I like DuraPrep because um, the marks stay a little bit better than with Betadine. They don't rub off quite as easily. Um, she has taken some PO Halcyon and also Vicodin. She's um, a little bit sedated, but very talkative and um, tolerating the tumescent fluid as we're injecting it very slowly. About 50 cc's or 100 cc's per minute is my flow rate right now. Our tumescent fluid today is um, 1,000 milligrams of lidocaine in a liter of normal saline with 12 and a half cc's of bicarb and one amp of epinephrine. She can have as much as 2,300 milligrams of lidocaine. So we're planning on two bags or 2,000 cc's of tumescent fluid today. So we should be well under her 45 milligrams per kilo dosing. Today we're doing this procedure under a tumescent anesthesia technique. We're only doing the lower back and the flank regions. If we were doing a lot more liposuction, such as a vaser high definition procedure, I would tend to do that under an epidural with IV sedation. But since we're not doing quite as much today, we should be able to keep her very comfortable and we also won't be in the OR quite as long so I think a tumescent technique will work very nicely for her. We finished the emulsification process and the third process will be the extraction of the fat or the liposuction portion. For that we're going to use the Micro Air. This is the PAL 650 which is their newest handpiece and it's pretty simplistic, very easy to use. Basically we'll hand off the power cord and that's hooked up red dot to red dot, just snaps in. It hooks to 110. The dial there will control how fast the hand unit will oscillate backwards and forwards. And um, here's the power switch. So you have a plug in, 110. We plug the power cord to the hand piece into the, into the base unit. And then we have a control for speed here. So, that's how you hook up the micro air itself. The first cannula that I've chosen is smooth on one side and has the, the openings on the other side. And I'll be doing this in the subdermal area. I don't want to injure the undersurface of the skin. And so I'll keep the smooth side of the cannula towards the undersurface or the dermal layer of the skin. I won't be here very long, but I do think taking out some of the subdermal tissue will be helpful in terms of getting better skin contracture. Uh, that can supplement what you're doing with the lasers or with the ultrasound to get better skin contracture. I think that the handpiece, as it oscillates back and forth, gives us a bit more control. It, certainly makes it easier to get through fibrotic tissues or, such as um, young males that have a lot of fibrotic tissue in the flank region particularly. I think we also get a little bit better control in terms of the feedback that you get on the, on the smart hand, knowing the level uh, that you're in the tissue and also the degree of resistance that the cannula is uh, meeting. So I think overall it makes it a bit easier to, to do your liposuction with the PAL unit. It also um, gives us a bit more control. There is a bit of vibration to the unit, but it, um, it certainly isn't uh, something that is distracting or uncomfortable for either me or the patient. Again, overall I think it's a, a really good technique to combine with um, either laser or with ultrasound. The handpiece really doesn't feel warm at all. Maybe just a little bit warmer than room temperature. It certainly is not uncomfortable to hold. Um, I don't feel any friction on the, uh, the skin or any increase in temperature related to the cannula at all, especially if you've used a fair amount of tumescent fluid.
All right, I've done a little bit of work in the subdermal layer, and I want to change cannulas, so I just remove the tubing for a moment. Push the yellow button. This will easily slide off. Slide on a new cannula, locks into place. Put my tubing back on the end of the cannula, slide it into the channel of the handpiece, and I'm ready to go. So this is a more aggressive cannula than what I had here. It has openings uh, circumferentially around the cannula itself. And now I'm gonna do my deep work. On my right hand, which is holding the, the unit, I'm really not feeling much at all. There's a little bit of vibration associated with it. And the patient just commented that she feels a little tickling sensation. Certainly is not painful for her at all. My left hand, I think, is getting even more feedback from the cannula because it's oscillating. It's easier for me to tell the depth of the cannula. I can feel anatomical structures a little bit better. I can tell how much fat is left behind much more easily because of the increased tactile information that I'm getting related to the oscillations and the vibrations coming from the PAL unit itself. In regards to recovery, I think it has more to do with the volume that you've taken out and the surface areas that have received liposuction. I'm not seeing any increased bruising. I'm not seeing any increased discomfort post-op. I'm not seeing any lengthening of the recovery time related to the use of the PAL. My suspicion is, is that it actually makes it a little bit easier in that I'm able to complete the procedure faster. I'm able to get the patient off the table a bit quicker. And I do think that the, the end result is smoother utilizing the PAL than without it. And we do get a little bit more fat out as well. One of the advantages of using the PAL is that you do have more control, more tactile feel. Also, you don't have to push as hard on the cannula to get through the tissue. And I think that increases our safety. I think there's less chance of puncturing through the abdomen or possibly between the ribs or even injuring some of the musculature that's underneath the fatty layer. So I, I think in a way it does add to safety as well. Just change positions to make it easier to get to the opposite side. Now I'm in the last few millimeters here of fat and I think this is one real advantage of using the PAL in that it lets me really ascertain the last few cc's of fat that need to be removed. And this is really where the sculpting begins, especially with high definition lipo. Um, you can start to really sculpt folks and the PAL really helps in that process in that we're able to really find those last few cc's of fat. Well, we're all finished. Everything went just fine. I think that the result will, will be very nice. We've got a nice contour here. We've got some definition between the buttock and the back, a little bit more lordosis. I think overall she's gonna be happy, at least I hope so. The PAL unit was very helpful in terms of being able to get a little bit more fat out. The last few minutes I was working on her left side to, to thin out the left side to make it as um, uh, equal and symmetric as I could from the right. Had um, a little bit of volume over here that I really had to work with and I think the PAL helped me to be able to feel those last couple of centimeters of, uh, of fat to be, able, to be able to pull out. So I think overall she did well and um, um, I hope that that will be helpful to you in your liposuction career. All right, now I'm just making my standard liposuction incisions, just where I'm gonna suck from and where I'm gonna inject the fluid from. Uh, on the sides to get further around the back, we're doing a tummy tuck, so we're getting rid of this stuff here. Uh, so I can just use that for a couple ports to, to do some suction in this area. Uh, and one down here to fill up the, the Mons area. So that's all we're doing there. And then we'll just put in our tumescent. In the cannula, I'm just running it very perpendicular to the skin. I can feel it underneath the skin with my hand back here. That way I know I'm not in the liver or a kidney or anything 
exciting like that. We tend to try and stay out of those places. Cool. And John, would you pop me a couple of sterile towels just to be able to blot with, please? And just per kind of standard with any suction, we're going to be, uh, thank you. Get a little privacy here. Blot. I'm going to two mess until it's really very tight back here. This would be considered the super wet technique, really. The patient's under general anesthesia. She's got a LMA airway in, and anesthesia is running her on. Is she on gas? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Usually it'd be gas or propofol or a combination. Um, but you couldn't do this comfortably, put in this much fluid, this rapidly with a patient without having at least some degree of significant sedation. I kind of have my routine. I usually start on this side, I'll inject, this side, go to the other side. By the time I finish injecting, because it's going to take me seven to ten minutes, this tumescent from where I started should be working well enough that I could just get straight to suction. If it was just a small area, then I'd probably give it a few minutes to set. Okay, time to sculpt. There you go. Put it in and turn on the canister. And then it's just standard liposuction. So I'm just making passes back through here. I can feel the cannula with my back hand. Not staying in one spot, but always kind of moving along the area. Occasionally I'll come out just to break the suction. These ports that I'm using for the suction are an area that's going to be cut out. So I don't worry too much about repeatedly going in and out of those and over sucking that area because it's going to just disappear. But if it was one that was not going to get cut out, then I'd pay more attention about making sure I don't get too near the hole too many times. And look at what's coming out. Everything's still just nice and mostly yellow, a combination of fluid and fat, not very much bleeding. Sometimes you'll get tissue that clogs this up. We just take a sterile towel or something, pull the, the clogging tissue out. Okay, that's good. All right, let's go, Rob. I'm just going to pull her toward me a little bit, just so she stays in the table. That's good. And then I'll take this thigh over that one like a cheerleader. Now I have better access back here. So I see what's coming out. Just a little bit more bloody, so that's one indication of a stopping point for me. You don't want it to be too much like that. As I've worked up here, now like, the stuff that's coming out is not bloody again. Just more pure fat and tumescent fluid. Also gives me a different angle to suction this. So my fan is going back and forth. Just like with standard liposuction, if you can come out, come at something from a couple different angles, it's always better. So I can feel the thickness of what I'm sucking, where the cannula is. Good stuff still coming out. We've got a fair amount of fat so far. This is all bra fat area. And everything's sucking easy. It's good. Contour looks good, feels good. Good, she can come flat. Just working on this edge of the tummy tuck down here. We can see this side's already come in quite a bit relative to that, as we'd expect. 
And I actually am going to suction some of the flap. I think you'll find plastic surgeons that go either way. We, we do suction the tummy tuck flaps, and patients do well. No higher incidence of tissue loss or necrosis or poor healing than if we don't suction the flaps. We actually did a study on that years ago. I will be not as aggressive in her though because she has not been able to stop smoking. So a lot of the suction up here is just helping free up and loosen the tissues. And so we've been going for about 10 minutes or so maybe and we're looking at 1100 cc so far. A lot of that's fat, most of it is. So parallel to the skin. I always know where it's at. Nice long strokes. Go in here at the belly button. You can feel it right up here. I know we're not too deep, not going underneath the rib cage. Please do. I'll come out so it doesn't splatter. So how much did we put in, John? What was our two messing? So, 4,800 of our tumescent solution. Yeah. So that's really dilute, 0.025, 1 to 2 million. She got just under 5 liters, and she would not be at uh, problem levels until we were probably three times past that. She could handle by her size a lot more before we had any worries about too much lidocaine or too much epinephrine. So that's not a worry for us today. And what's coming out is still hardly any blood, which is fantastic. So now I've come with this quadrant from this direction and I'm and from this direction, so two different directions in that area. Tissues feel pretty uniform. And that's about all I'm gonna do, not being super aggressive because of the smoking. So go to the next quadrant, work our way over. So my preference on cannulas, everybody's different. I like the shorter cannulas as opposed to the longer cannulas um, just because I don't have to be as far away and this still reaches almost everything if I need a longer cannula then we'd switch that out and uh, we're turned all the way up on the power sculpt I don't have a I don't have a setting other than all the way up I don't think any of us do nobody does anything so it really should, could just be turn it on and have it go all the way I'm not sure what the lower settings are for but they're not for me. So when I was doing my training in Birmingham, Alabama, with Louis Vasquez, who's a fantastic plastic surgeon and great teacher, and he always just had us think of liposuction. He was the one like long strokes. It's like playing the violin. So, so to make it look less traumatic and more elegant instead of having a, you know, like that that scares people when they see on TV that kind of suction. Just nice, long, and strokes. And the direction always parallel, always safe, so I can sleep at night. Getting a little bit more blood there now, so just near the belly button, so it's not too far from where that is. That's not unusual to get a little bit more near your insertion sites 
That's because there's been a little more trauma there. But another endpoint, I think. Yeah, feels good. And that's enough of that. Good. The other guys here, some I think they use some of the bigger cannulas, the fives, and then the doubles that have uh, more holes. Again, it's all personal preference. I think that the bigger the cannula, five or six, it actually it's more difficult to push through the tissues than the smaller cannula. So even though maybe you're sucking out more uh, at a time and doesn't take you quite as long, it's just more difficult to push through. So I don't know that surgeon fatigue is any different from maybe making a few more passes with a four and putting in a five. And for me, I think the double cannulas maybe create a little bit more tissue trauma. Maybe a little bit more bleeding, but I can't prove it because I haven't studied it. Just one of those seems like things. So I'm just going to compare my thickness feeling as I go across here. I feel pretty uniform in the areas that we're leaving behind. I think maybe I've got to get a little bit more stuff up in here. This may be a little thinner there. I'm getting pretty close to what I can get from this side. I'm going to go ahead and suction the mons area here a little bit. Using my hand to kind of put tension on the tissues. Also, just know that I'm directly underneath me. I'm going. Look at what I'm getting out. It's fine. She doesn't have a lot down here, which is great, but you want to be nice and even within it's the tummy tuck. Stuff is coming out. Looks really good. And that's all that needs. So I was going to say I suction back here before we go rob, before we turn her. And the reason I do that is to have mercy on my assistant so that they don't have to hold her for 10 minutes. They can just hold her for three or four. And also it's a different direction. Once you rotate the body, it changes the direction of your suction. So it's allowing us to come at it from a couple different directions. But I'm right-handed and the left side is more difficult to do without flipping. So I'll flip her a little bit quicker. But I can still feel it. I'm using my dominant hand to suck, not my non-dominant because I just don't, I mean, I can do it. I just don't feel maybe quite as smooth, although it works out fine. So my strokes here are shorter because I just have a small area to hit or I'm hitting just an isolated pouch. There, I'm going all the way to the back. That's good. Last section of fat, the bra line area. Okay, we can come flat. Good. Okay. Let's pull her toward you just a little bit. Good. We want to look at her at even on the table. And I know we still have a lot of stuff up here, but we have a tummy tuck to do. Got good looseness. Contours look pretty even. Let's see if there's a little bit more here. Feels nice and thin though. So there's not a lot more that I want to do. Let's make sure it feels good. And might be a little pouch right there, a little dog ear. It will just suction. And it's probably fluid, not fat. So we're done. Welcome to our instructional video showing you how to perform male muscular etching.
Abdominal etching was introduced in 1993 and has been used to enhance the muscular architecture of men seeking improvement in their torso. Dr. Henry Mintz pioneered this technique. He also uses pectoral etching in the chest to define the pectoralis muscle. These techniques have improved through the years, especially since the scars are less visible and the results have improved. First, the surgeon evaluates the patient, his overall health, his goals, and his general physique. When I go to the gym, I do see results. I see results like on my arms, my arms get bigger, my chest, everywhere else but my abs. My abs, I just could never get them the way I want them. My wife, she doesn't complain, but sometimes she does uh, say her little remarks when we watch a show, like a movie where there's Hercules looking guys, and she's like, man, it would be so awesome if you could get your six pack going. And I've seen your pictures on the beach. You look great. You have, uh, you're nicely fit. Your arms are big, your legs are big, your shoulders are broad, and there's just that little veil of fat that covers those abs, and I think that we can improve that unveil those abs, yes. uh, get them a show, get them a shine, that six pack come through, I think it'll do wonderfully. You know, the recovery should last, uh, you know, a week or so of work, and then you probably get you back in the gym in three weeks. Uh, I bet over three months or so, you'll get nicely cut, you'll get those, that six pack back, and you'll be feeling good back to the beach. And Chris is excited about what his wife will think. I would love to see a big old smile on her whenever she sees me with my shirt off. Abdominal etching patients should be relatively lean, with body fat up to 15 or 20 percent. They should have excellent health habits and long-term goals. Fat pad thickness and pinch test are necessary to define the appropriate procedure. Poor skin elasticity, sun damage, stretch marks, and substantial weight loss will limit the results. Modified etching patients are generally softer and have body fat percentages above 20 percent with less ambitious health habits. Chest softness and gynecomastia is present in about half of abdominal edge patients and pectoral etching and gynecomastia excision can be offered. Puncture gynecomastia excision is preferred unless there are any suspicious breast nodules which should be removed in block and sent for pathology. So after preoperative evaluation and counseling, patients are prepared for surgery. Just before surgery, we mark patient's anatomy for the procedure. We begin with the patient standing since the skin and fat shift when lying down. The surgeon marks the linea alba and lateral edge of the rectus muscles. While he's flexed, flex for me again, we mark the, the edges of the inscriptions. Modified etching patients do not require these marks. The inscriptions should be precisely marked. There are six above the umbilicus and none below. On the chest, the inferior and lateral pectoral edge is marked, along with the auxiliary fullness and any glandular fullness. Incision marks can be adjusted depending on patient preferences. There'll be three incisions on the, on the abs, one, two, and three and we'll use the areolar incisions for the top inscriptions as well. There will also be an incision at the buttock crease. After general anesthesia, incremental pressure garments are used on the lower legs and air warmers can be used above. A Foley is not used unless the procedures total more than three hours of surgery. A single dose of low molecular weight heparin is generally used as a precaution for deep vein thrombosis. Once the drapes are in place, we can begin the Hunstad formula to Messen infiltration. All of the infiltration is done at the beginning of the operation to allow for vasoconstriction. All incisions are used for the infiltration. In order to perform etching, a more aggressive cannula can be used. The open basket is better for inline etching, and since the holes are in one place, it can be used to etch transversely. Also, utilizing a power-assisted device adds advantage for patients who are fibrous and makes the etching portion of the operation much easier. Dr. Mintz does not recommend more aggressive devices like ultrasound or laser because of the close proximity to the skin surface and the risk of blister and necrosis. Begin first with thinning the abdominal fat pad. Utilizing all three of the lower incisions a fan pattern with cross tunneling is the best technique for smoothness. Usually a goal of one centimeter pinch thickness is appropriate. The lower abdomen should be slightly thinner than the upper so that it flattens the abdomen. 
Next, thin the fat pad over the obliques to about half of that thickness. As you thin this area, you will notice the junction of the thinner oblique pad next to the thicker rectus area. Next, we get to the etching. Etching of the linea alba can be done through the central incision. Linear pressure and pinch etching can be used to deepen the etch. The etched area should be about two centimeters in width. The linea semilunaris can be etched to enhance the transition through the lateral incisions and through the central one. It is easiest to begin the transverse etching with the lower inscription. Linear etching can be done from the same side as well as the opposite side. Doing this from both incisions enhances the results. In order to reduce the visible incisions, we can etch the middle inscription first from the opposite hip incision with linear etching using pressure etching. To enhance the middle inscription, the lower incisions can be used for etching with pressure and pinch etching. This is usually done in increments along the etched area. You can also reach the middle inscription from the upper areolar incision. The upper inscription is best reached from the opposing areolar incision. Using linear etching with pressure can enhance the etched area. Further thinning of the upper abs and upper linea alba may be performed through this upper incision. Let's look at the chest now. Generally, men complain about chest fullness and roundness, which gives them a more feminine look. The goal here is to create a more linear slab appearance that appears more muscular and defined. We can accomplish this with strategies of thinning and defining through etching and removal of any remnant gynecomastia. After tumescent infiltration, the chest fat pad is thinned similar to the abdomen, leaving about a centimeter of thickness over the pectoralis major and thinning the perimeter, especially laterally and inferiorly to about half that. The inferior edge of the pectoralis is etched most easily from the opposite areolar incision. Again, the corner of the pect major is most important in defining a more linear appearance. If the uppermost transverse inscription is high, sometimes a broad etch helps to define both. Then, etching is performed laterally from the axilla to outline the lateral edge of the pectoral muscles using linear etching with pressure or pinching. Take special care to define the outside corner. This really helps to reduce a rounded inframammary crease. Lastly, if there is any glandular remnant, it can be addressed with puncture excision. Perform blunt dissection below and above the gland to separate the areolar skin from the glandular tissue. Next, remove the glandular tissue in a piecemeal fashion with a hemostat and scissor. There will usually be more tissue laterally. Finally, after all of the abdominal and pectoral suctioning is completed, the patient is turned. Liposuction of the love handles is performed by cross-tunneling from the posterior and hip incisions. Dr. Mintz prefers incisions left open since it allows for excess fluids to drain. Suturing increases seroma formation, bruising, and stitch marks. After the suction is complete, the skin is washed and dried. Dr. Mintz likes to use adhesive foam tape for the etched area in order to speed resolution of swelling and earlier definition of etched areas. Elastic garments are necessary to reduce swelling and bruising. Post-op garments include waist binders and chest garments. Garments with sleeves are preferred if axillary suctioning is performed. Patients are treated outpatient for liposuction aspirates less than five liters and low molecular weight heparin is given prior to discharge to reduce DVT. Dr. Mintz etched this patient 12 years ago. Ben has kept his athletic contours. Again, with great definition of his rectus muscles, nice linea alba, semilunaris, and transverse inscriptions. And you can see, even after 12 years, it's very thin over the inscription, thicker over the rectus muscle, again, thin over the inscription, thicker over the rectus muscle, and thin again. So the ab etching has, has uh, continues to augment his muscles and give him a more healthy and athletic appearance. Tell me what kind of things you've done to stay fit. 
Uh, a regular workout regime, I do uh, weights probably three to four times a week mm -hmm. and a cardio two to three times a week. I still watch my diet. I mean, I know that the abdominal etching has given me something that I couldn't achieve through, you know, working out and dieting, but I do want to maintain it. So I feel that this in conjunction with um, a good program will help me continue to uh, maintain this look. Armand, tell me uh, why you decided to do the air bench. I've always been an athletic individual and uh, tried uh, playing a lot of tennis squash. A uh, little bit of weights here and there, but not much. But I never could achieve definition. And uh, this really allowed me to, to, to achieve this, this nice uh, musculature definition that I always wanted. <laughs> and the ladies love it too. Yes, they do. Meet one of Dr. Mintz's partners, plastic surgeon Herman Newell. It's been seven years since his ab etch, and this doc is looking hotter than ever. He's got nice ab definition, uh, linear bus, semilunaris, and transverse inscriptions. Ab and pec etching is relatively easy to learn and results can last for an extended period of time. You must carefully assess the patient's goals and medical history. Planning and critical placement of marks are crucial when performing the surgery. The liposuction is tedious and detailed, but the results can improve a patient's contours and allow for a more athletic and pleasing physique. Thank you for watching Dr. Mintz's instructional video on male muscular etching. This has been a Hunt Magnet Media production.